And welcome back, everyone, to What If, the week of What If. And today's What If comes to us from, I think it's J, I, I really need to write some of these names down better. I want to say it's J-A-U-C-E-L, Jekyll, Jacil. Uh, that's the question, what if Superman was in the MCU? Now, you'll notice I have the Edmund Cavill Superman up when I'm doing this particular What If. That is because if I inserted the actual comic book main series Superman into the MCU, the MCU would not have any single problems whatso freaking ever. Because that Superman is so hacked, he can literally destroy the infinite near infinite multiverse with a punch, is able to resist reality erasure, is able to literally fly across the entire of his universe in only a couple of minutes, strong enough to literally to literally move a planet with little effort, get tuned into a gob through absorbing solar radiation, pretty much, by, uh, and by just dipping into a sun and just charging through it. And you're not necessarily a gob. He's already a god among them. Point being, is only actually weak to individuals as strong as him, which there would be none in the MCU, or kryptonite, or and, and no special, special resistance to magic. So... I cannot use the comic Superman for this what if, because at that point, I might as well turn the video off right now, and the what if is done. No, we'll use the uh, the DCEU version, because it's the most recent on-screen version we've had. The DCU, DCEU and the MCU were comparable contemporaries for a while, and now the DCEU is dead, while the MCU is still, still, is still going. Maybe not as thriving as it used to be, but still very much going. And so, yeah, because even though Superman is still, like, top tier in his verse, by all accounts, he's a much weaker version of the character than, we, than we've had uh, before. Compared to, he's much weaker than the Kong version. For example, we, A, first don't know if he has a special resistance to magic or not. He, this one version could. B, he's still weak to Kryptonite. C, he could still be uh, thrown around by individuals of comparable strength. D, we know he can survive getting hit by a nuke, but being hit by a nuke uh, will knock his ass out. Straight knock his ass out. In fact, based on how much damage that nuke did to him in Batman v Superman, I would say if you were to hypothetically throw every nuke we had at this version of Superman, you might succeed in killing him. But that's just based on what we saw in the movie. Now, that being said, however... How exactly does Superman fit into the MCU here? Obviously, we could say Krypton still blew up. He went to, he came to Earth. We will not say there's a Zod here because that's not for this. Well, that, that, that doesn't work. We're not combining that lore. We're just saying there's a Superman here. So Superman starts off, starts as Clark Kent, grows up in Kansas. First and foremost, where does he go in terms of his city? Is there a metropolis in the MCU he can go to? Uh... Is there another city that we can say is a, you know, a contemporary to that or an equivalent to it? For the sake of just a, an easy writing, let's say he does exist in a metropolis. He would also still be trying to help around the world when he can, because that's what Superman was doing. Be, but first and foremost, S.H.I.E.L.D. would know about him from the get. From the get. Because if we're saying that the 33-year-old Superman that we meet in Man of Steel, the Superman we're meeting at the beginning of the MCU, the MCU starts in 2008. That would mean that Superman... Well, okay, maybe not from the get. Let me let me back that up a bit. That means Superman would have to have fallen to Earth at, in around 1975. Now, he would have been existing on Earth for just about 33 years. Captain Marvel wasn't a, didn't happen until around the mid to late 90s. And Superman probably wouldn't go help her because he still is a Superman. He's still a young Clark discovering his powers. All that, all that goodness, all that juiciness. But that being said, when Superman starts showing up in you know his world, which he would have shown up prior to Iron Man, he he exist on some level. Shield would have would have knowledge on him, along with like the Hulk and all that. So Shield would have knowledge on him. But they keep an they keep a safe distance because they still haven't figured out. What they can do about this guy. He can survive gunfire or explosions. He can literally lift, literally lift like buildings without with ease. So this is like a super powered individual. They are prepared for it. But he seems to keep to himself. He seems to give himself help around the world when he can. Shield has maybe even approached him a couple times about maybe joining Shield. 
Uh, Clark just says, I'm good doing it. I'm good working on my own. Although I'm sure I'd be willing to help you out when you need to. Anyway, g g hello, uh, good day to you. And then he flies off. Keep in mind, I'm using the DCEU version of Clark and Superman, but not necessarily his personality. He'd still very much have the personality of Superman. <clears throat> now, that said, that said, Superman isn't, I mean, technically speaking, Superman in the comics could theoretically be in multiple places at once. He's moving so fast. But this Superman can't be in every place at every time. So the question now becomes, when does Superman get involved with the MCU timeline in terms of stop, stopping in to help out in one of the movies? I don't think it would be Iron Man that's really contained. You would need something that becomes a threat to an actual city. Which, ironically enough, would be the next movie in line, which would be The Incredible Hulk. Now, I don't think he's showing up for the Incredible Hulk. Uh, he does, he's not showing up to deal with the Hulk when they're in, he's in South America. He's also not showing up to deal with Hulk when they attack the campus. I think when the attack on Harlem happens, because they are recording it, super, that's when Superman shows up. I would say um, he shows up after Hulk is slammed into the building. Uh, general, just, <laughs> or actually, no, after, after the helicopter goes down. And... You know, abom abominable, abominations like, General! <laughs> and all of a sudden, boom, Superman just grabs it. Like, I think that's enough. Boom! <laughs> and then finally, you know, Blonsky's like, <laughs> Oh, finally, I've been waiting for something like this. And they go and they clash. Now, keep in mind, in terms of strength, while Superman was top dog still technically in his own universe, we are dealing with an exceptionally nerfed version of the character compared to the comics. That being said, from the strongest, some of the strongest feats we've seen him do in the DCEU, like moving that giant tanker through the ice, that was an exceptionally impressive strength feat. He is still probably stronger than the Hulk and the Abomination at this point. The Hulk actually can get stronger than him in this world. The Hulk can do that. But... Abomination, who is already base-wise more stronger than the Hulk, Hulk cannot be, get stronger than Superman. I think, though, at least initially, he is strong enough to definitely give Superman a solid fight. Like, Superman, up until this point, has not had to deal with overly powerful individuals or metahumans. So, they start clashing, and it's boom! Superman's the faster, though. He's, hits him with the, he's hitting him with the laser, uh, the, uh, the heat beams. Uh, eventually, though, the, the, in, uh, Blonsky is, like, he's just trying to, uh, you know, stop, uh, stop it. He's even feeling the, uh, burn on his hands. Uh, throws rocks at them. Finally grabs Superman, and unfortunately for Superman, as we saw in Man of Steel, which I just rewatched Wednesday for our mo my, uh, weekly movie night with my dad and my girlfriend, Clark's not a soldier. He wasn't trained, he doesn't, he's not trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Blonsky's a soldier. So even though Blonsky isn't as strong as Superman, and probably not as durable, he can, I imagine, A, first off, he can draw blood. I think he can draw blood. And B, he's more skilled. So he eventually probably gets him in a headlock. Maybe he, Soup's just trying to break out of there. Eventually he just kind of, boom, headbutts him in the back, almost rabbit punches him, which d actually knocks Superman out briefly. He's, he's just, uh, throws him at the helicopter. Blonsky just, he gets the fire going. Explosion's happening. Superman... He's trying to shake it off. He's got. He tries to help him, but he can't. He's just. Oh. And that's when the Hulk is up. Hulk smash! Boom! Um, thunder claps it. Uh, Hulk starts beating the hell out of Abomination. Just. And, and finally, the Superman just goes. That's enough. And the Hulk just boom smacks Hulk a Superman back of it. Um, he finally, he finally looks at Bang. Superman's about to get ready to attack. She says, stop, wait! And Superman just stops and hovers for a second. And Hulk just beats Blonsky down. Just, <laughs> Hulk's, Hulk yells out in victory. And then he goes off into the night. Um, and and I can see Ross. He's like, are she going to go after him? Uh, from, what I, from everything, uh, from little I understand, I'm willing to bet that's not a good idea. Uh, besides, I've got I've got more important things to do, like taking this uh, taking him in. And so, so Hulk uh, Superman goes and brings the uh, abomination in. Now, keep in mind, blood was drawn, and the military and shield aren't always the most forefront thinking. Let's call it. We'll save that because I have an idea for that later down in the series. But let's move on, shall we?
Captain America, let's get out of the way right now. Captain America and Captain Marvel and a giant chunk of the Eternals, Superman would not be showing up. Uh, which I do find it funny. They 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 have Superman. So apparently the DC comic line exists within the MCU because they mentioned that in Eternals. It's like, he's like Superman. He wore a cape and everything. I don't wear a cape. Um, so yeah, apparently the DC comic line exists within uh, Marvel. <clears throat> but... The next thing would be that would be up would be Thor. I don't personally think because again it's localized enough that and there wasn't like any real reporting on it at all. I'm sure uh, Superman keeps his like ears uh, to the ground, but then again, Superman the Superman's a little nerfed on his abilities. I don't know if he can hear everything across like the planet, so he probably wouldn't be getting involved there. What he would get involved with though is obviously the Avengers, where. But only when the Ch the Chitauri arrive. He arrives to help out on the scene of the Avengers, basically making him an unofficial part of the Avengers. Um, he's kind of like, it's his version of the Justice League. Then he shows up, I see, and, who is, and you're, you must be Superman. I've heard many things about you. I, it's like, I am Thor, son of Odin. It's an honor to meet you. And I think him and, uh, him and Thor probably actually get along pretty well. And this version of Thor... Once we get into Ragnarok and Infinity War, could probably beat the MCU Superman, if I'm going to be honest. If I'm going to be honest, I think he could beat Superman. But, I, that's my personal opinion. Uh, point being, Superman is based, they're aiding in the, uh, they're aiding in the fight, and Superman is one of the few members of them who can go into space. So he goes into space, and he's just attacking the sh uh, the Chitari ships from space. Until he, they pretty much wipe out the entirety of that fleet. He, that he wipes out the entirety of that fleet. And ultimately just shows back up and they just clean up the Striders. This means that the nuke doesn't need to be activated. Uh, and, they, and they're able to close the portal. Which means Tony doesn't have his near-death experience. So he's not suffered from PTSD in Iron Man 3. Which would chronologically be the next movie in the, the franchise. Superman bids him farewell, saying that, you know, maybe this idea of a team isn't so bad. And, you know, if you need me, you know, you'll know how to find me. <clears throat> so leading into Iron Man 3, what's interesting here is that without the PTSD... First off, Tony would still be making suits. He still likes to take her, but he wouldn't be struggling as much. He wouldn't have the, the panic attack episodes... Which means that, I mean, I honestly think most of what happens still happens. Tony's just in a better headspace. Although, he probably still has, uh, is still learning a little bit from uh, the experience of Manhattan and aliens and all that. Uh, it's still, he doesn't have that growth experience, but I still think he's got the growing experience. Like, people still died ultimately, so I think he's still got that weighing on him. But he's not dealing with the panic attacks, which I think is very key for his character here. So, guilt or whatnot, I still think is very prevalent. Winter Soldier, I don't see... Was that, was that the next one? No, sorry. Thor Dark World, most of that takes place off-world. So only some of it is on... Is, uh, I mean, some of it is on Earth. I, I can see Superman maybe stopping him for that, but I really don't see it being that... Uh, I, I don't see him playing that big a factor in it, to be honest. Even when he activated the reality stone, the ether. Uh, Superman theoretically could, has enough power like Thor to kind of stop it to some, some degree. But still, he, he might help out with that. It all depends. It depends if he gets there in time. Then it would be Guardians and Winter Soldier. I don't see Superman playing a factor in either of those. What I do see him doing is showing back up for Age of Ultron, where they storm the Hydra base. The Hydra, they just try to take on Superman. It doesn't do anything. Uh, Superman, Superman is not necessarily part of the Avengers, but he is kind of, it's kind of like Rhodey. It's kind of like Rhodey and Sam at that point. They're not official Avengers at this point, but he still hangs out. He still helps them. By all accounts, he's an Avenger. And the fun part would be in that dinner, uh, in that uh, party scene where he tries to lift a hammer. He, even he struggles, but he's like, he's losing with sheer po muscle power. He's kind of able to sort of move it even more so than Cap, but it's like, huh, uh, I can even see Thor being like, now this one, this one I'm worried about a little bit. Let's see what you've got, big man. <laughs> like, I can see him doing that. Honestly, even though um, Superman has lifted the hammer, I believe, in the comics before, I think he was on pure strength. Because you need to have a warrior's heart as well. And Superman, I 
don't know really qualifies for that. It's weird because he has lifted the hammer before. I just don't know if he really meets the qualifications with thinking on it. But whatever. So Superman. So then obviously the Ultron's attack. Superman takes care of those guys. They go to try to stop Ultron on the tanker. I think that's the one Wanda gets in all their heads, including Clark, who's probably envision remembering his dad dying, which we're going to do with a heart attack route here because yeah. Uh, it's like all this power and I couldn't save him. It's like all that's power and you can't save anyone. You can't save it. You're, do you really belong here? You're an alien. Like it just, she's gotten in his head, but he's, he's able to kind of shake it off and go help Tony deal with banner. Uh, Again, the Hulk now raging out. This is something that even Clark, it's Superman, it's Clark is struggling with. Like the Hulk just completely unbound, more or less, is something that his Superman is not prepared to deal with. And he's struggling against him. He and Tony together will have to knock, do the manage to knock him out. Ultimately, they go to fight Ultron. They're fighting the Ultron bots. Vision and Superman both confront, uh, go, uh, con all, uh, confront Ultron. And. Unfortunately for Ultron, while his vibranium is tough, we saw it get overwhelmed. So the vibranium just isn't, it's not indestructible. It's not adamantium. When adamantium gets introduced in the MCU, then we can have a conversation, but it's not adamantium, which means he and Soup's are able to, alone are able to, or Soup is able to actually kind of take on Ultron pretty effectively on his own. But still, it's, it, nothing would change in terms of the outcome. They're able to more or less... Um, take care of Ultron when, uh, as needed. That being said, I don't see Clark st uh, saving Quicksilver, unfortunately, because he's going to be busy dealing with Ultron. All his great power, and he couldn't save him, more or less. Ant-Man, not going to be dealing with that. Uh, Civil War, Clark may pick a side in Civil War, and I think what he would pick, honestly, is Cap's side, which would be problematic for Tony's side. <laughs> because... When you break it down, the strongest guy they had on the team for Tony's side was Vision. Yeah, they're not going to do well, again, with Vision versus... Uh, Vision versus Superman would be interesting because he can go intangible, which, yeah, is interesting. And because he's made of vibranium, he can't deliver pretty powerful shots to, to Clark. As well, he has the Mind Stone in there, which actually he could theoretically shut Clark down mentally if he got a hold of him. Or just blast him with pure cosmic energy from the Day of Stone, which is something even Superman would not be, at least this version, would not be able to just you know, walk away from. He'd get, have like a deep burn on his body. And so they, they would be duking out in midair for a while. Ultimately, Clark, ultimately uh, Clark is able to separate Vision only as for Vision blasts him in the face. Uh, they, Clark has to, um, Clark does not surrender. He does kind of go into hiding, go back to Clark Kent. And has to stay on the the rate off the radar for a little bit after the whole fight is done. <clears throat> so even though he's still Superman, like again, there's not much they can do to stop him. Tony's suit could theoretically be powerful enough at a point to do some damage, but I don't know if, they, if there's anything he really has up his sleeve that could stop him. Soup is not going to show up for Doctor Strange. He's not going to show up for Spider Man. He is not going to show up for Guardians Two. Soup is not going to show back up until the until Infinity War, and he would be one of the Earthbound heroes in Wakanda. <clears throat> <clears throat> it definitely would be in Wakanda. Uh, he could show. He could be on with uh, with Tony and maybe try to help uh, uh, Peter. But yeah, uh, no, I think he would be in uh, Wakanda. I think he would stay Earthbound again because he's not predominantly in New York. He's predominantly in the version of Metropolis we have. And so he ultimately comes to their aid, uh, you know, for the Wakanda fight. He's pretty much just tearing through a hor hordes of these monsters. There's so many of them. But then, like, Call Obsidian, Proxima Midnight, uh, Ebony Ma, they all show up. Uh, I think, though, Superman does come in and stop them from attacking Vision while the Mind Stone is being, <clears throat> what Mind Stone is being removed. So I think he's actually able to kind of take down pro, uh, pro, uh, what is it? Ebony Maw is what he's able to do. Um, I think he's able to do that. Unfortunately, we just don't know how long it would have taken for Shuri to get the Mind Stone out, unfortunately. So I think she, Thanos does ultimately show up. But here, it's different. <clears throat> because here... <coughs> excuse me, I got something caught in my throat. Because here, 
Vision's all the way up on the tower, so there's more time. Thanos, though, with five out of the six damn stones, comes in, and he's wreaking, wrecking shop. Even Wanda, even though she was able to hold him back, is not able to stop him, ultimately. Uh, he uh, he realizes that not, it's not here, but he realizes where it is, and he basically just shows up right in the tower. And Superman is there, and he does come in, and he just uh, like, punched Thanos right in the face, only for Thanos to throw a Power Stone shot right back at him. And Superman, particularly this version of Superman, is does not, at least, again, this particular version of Superman, if we're going by this level of power, is not stronger than a Infinity Stone. He, I mean, he's strong enough to maybe hold one, like the Power Stone. He could do that. But he cannot take a power shot from the gauntlet with the Power Stone. And, uh, at least not without getting seriously hurt. And he gets back up, fires the, air, the energy blast. Uh, Thanos blocks it again. He, he basically just kind of reality warps him and then takes the Mind Stone and then it goes on his merry way. And then he snaps. Now, when I say Superman is is snapped away. Because he qualifies as an OG Avenger in this case? No, because the OG Avengers didn't get snapped. This leads us now into the events of Endgame. Really not much would happen here. Superman, Clark would probably have to go and aid in the time heist. Then they're fighting the, the non-Infinity Stone and the young Thanos. He's gonna, He gets cut by the axe, but he's strong enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe minimal with Thanos, definitely. Um... Ultimately, he's there at the end. I don't know if he'd be able to beat Thanos, but he would certainly, because if Thor can't beat Thanos, even though Thor's out of shape right now, then Thanos, then Superman wouldn't be able to beat Thanos, because I think Thor is stronger here. And he has Stormbreaker as well. That said, uh, that said, I think he would be able to add a really good dynamic to the, uh, to the fight as they're really clashing. Thor tries to go for the kill shot. Maybe uh, Superman gets him in a headlock. But Thanos just, you know, breaks it, rains, rain fire! Uh, eventually just rains fire on the whole group. Uh, it it culminates again with still with Tony's sacrifice uh, and everyone, you know, paying their respects, including Superman. Where would Superman uh, be in the rest of this? I don't personally think Superman would really end up, sh would really show up anywhere else within the MCU. Oh, no, honestly, I really don't know where Superman would be at this point in the series. Because he wouldn't show up for Black Widow. He would not show up for Shang-Chi. <clears throat> Unlikely he'd show up for Spider-Man, but anything's possible, I guess. Would not show up for Guardians 3. He would not show up for Doctor Strange 2. He would not show up for Thor, Thor 4. Would not show up for Black Panther 2. And I... Don't see him showing up for Quantumania or showing up for... Yeah, Superman, honestly, at that point, none, none of these... Because these all either send people to other locations or not large enough conflicts for him to get in, or to show up for. If Superman were in the MCU, he would actually be a, a boon. A boon to the team. Like, he is somewhat comparable, if not... Stronger or a little weaker than Thor, who's already among the strongest members of the team. So, he's definitely someone they would want on the team. He's a good guy. He'd be a team player, definitely. But, I say that using the DCEU character. Because if the actual comic Man of Steel, I have to repeat this, but the actual comic uh, Superman were in the MCU, then there would be no need for any hero to do anything ever, period. Uh, because that Superman is super busted compared to the MCU. But I digress. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you folks next time. Later.